Hi, Wild Kids. It's so good to be with you all. Now, last week we talked about choosing a good attitude. Well, tonight's lesson is very closely connected. It's about our thoughts. To start, I have a question for you. What do you spend most of your time thinking about? Well, what we think about is very important. And tonight's animal is going to help us talk about our thoughts. And our animal is the mighty moose. Have any of you ever seen a moose in the wild? I did once when I was in the state of Maine, but the moose was really far off in the distance, so I had to have binoculars to see him, but it was pretty cool. Well, there are an estimated 3,000 moose in northern Minnesota. These large animals can weigh up to 1,500 pounds. They have huge antlers and really large hooves that act as snowshoes in the winter. The big hooves also help them not to sink into muddy ground. Well, moose like the water. They're really good swimmers. And they eat plants, lots of them. A typical moose of 800 pounds can actually eat 70 pounds of plants in just one day. Their digestive system works just like a cow. The moose has a four-part stomach. After eating, it will rest and burp up the partially digested food from its stomach and chew on it again to break it down more, and then they swallow again. This is called chewing the cud. Well, humans do not chew the cud, and I'm glad that we don't. But it's similar to us chewing on a stick of gum. You know, you can chew on bubble gum for a long time, right? As humans, we can also chew on our thoughts over and over again. Does that ever happen to you? Maybe you did something really fun like Disney World on your last family vacation. And even weeks later, you might spend time thinking about the great time you had on your favorite ride. That's something pleasant to chew on. But you might also chew on thoughts that are not so good. Maybe someone at school laughed at you or called you names. You see and hear that event over and over in your mind, and it makes you feel angry or upset. You might even spend time thinking about what you could say or do to that person to hurt them back. Those are not good or healthy thoughts to chew on. God wants us to have good thoughts, to think about him and his words. He wants us to have thoughts that are kind, pure, and full of love. Just like choosing our attitude, we can choose what thoughts we will chew on or meditate on. Now, to meditate means to think, concentrate, or focus our minds on something. How many of you remember the story of Noah and the ark? Yes, it's, it's probably one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. But did you know why God sent a flood to cover the earth? Genesis 6, 5 tells us, it says that the Lord saw the great wickedness of the human race, and it says people's thoughts were only evil all the time. Their minds were full of bad things. But there was one man who stood out, Noah. The Bible says he did and thought about the right things. He was blameless and faithful to God. So the Lord rescued from death Noah and his family and all the animals that were on the ark during the devastating flood that covered the earth. Another Bible character is David. 
When David was young, he loved to meditate on God's commands. He would spend a lot of time out in the fields alone, um, taking care of his father's sheep. I want you to listen to David and how he would think about God's word. This comes from Psalm 119, starting at verse 97, and this is David writing, Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more in insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. Well, David spent his time thinking about God's word and how he could obey and please God. When David was older, he became the king of Israel appointed by God. Did you know that one of God's requirements for the king was to make a copy of God's laws and keep them with him forever so that he would not forget, but think about God's commands and obey them? So I want you to imagine King David sitting down with a scroll and ink and copying word for word at least the first five books of the Bible. That's right. David wanted to chew or focus on good thoughts in his heart and mind. He said in Psalm 1914, May the words of my mouth and the meditation or thinking of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What we think about, boys and girls, is very important. And we choose our own thoughts. Are you familiar with the Winnie the Pooh character called Eeyore? He's an old gray stuffed donkey with a bleak outlook on life. Eeyore always expects the worst out of people and situations. He's continually thinking negative thoughts. If you were Eeyore and saw this half glass of water, what thoughts might you think? That glass is half empty. It will never quench my thirst. I think Tigger got more water than me. And besides, I really wanted juice. Nothing ever goes right for me. Oh, this is going to be a bad day. Boys and girls, don't be an Eeyore. We need to learn or train our minds to dismiss bad or negative thoughts and replace them with good things. Instead, you know, you could look at this glass of water and have good thoughts, right? That glass is half full of fresh, clean, refreshing water, and I am really thirsty. I'm so thankful to have this water to quench my thirst. God is so good to me every day, and this is going to be another great day. Can you see the difference? Our verse this week is Philippians 4.8. And it helps us know what kinds of thoughts to focus our minds on. Listen, it says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Will you repeat that with me? Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's Philippians 4, 8. 
One important way to avoid bad thoughts is to be careful about what we see. What we allow into our minds from TV, videos, books, computers, social media, and other things will all affect our thoughts. Is what you see and hear good, pure, and honorable, like our Bible verse says? Boys and girls, tell me, who knows our every thought? That's right, God does. Let's choose thoughts that please Him. Next time you chew on a piece of gum, think about what's in your mind. Are you filling your head and heart with good things to chew on? What does God want for my life? To think good thoughts. Let's think about God and his wonderful words like David did. And let's say our theme together tonight. I can choose good thoughts. Once again, I can choose good thoughts. By wireless from the BBC, Her Majesty the Queen of the Netherlands. Fellow Hollanders, the lights have gone out over free Holland. Where only two weeks ago there was a free nation of men and women brought up in the cherished tradition of Christian civilization, there is now the stillness of death. Oppressed, threatened, watched on every side by a power that would tear out all hope from the soul of man. The unhappy people of Holland can only pray in silence. Well, last time in our story, Nazi soldiers took Corey, Betsy, and Father Casper to prison for hiding Jews in their home. Sadly, Father Casper died a few days later. But one day, Corey received a package, and under the postage stamp was a secret message. It said, All the watches in your closet are safe. The Jews who were hidden in the tiny room behind Corey's closet had been rescued. Corey was so happy that God answered her prayers. But the days passed slowly for Corey in prison. Some days, she struggled to choose good thoughts. She was very lonely and separated from her sister, Betsy. One day, a guard shouted down the prison corridor, Get dressed and pack your things! Corey frantically got her few belongings together. Were they being released? She wondered. Prisoners were packed into buses and taken to a train station. There, Corey caught a glimpse of Betsy. The train platform was crowded, but Corey worked her way through the mass of prisoners to get right next to Betsy. Praise God! Corey cried as they hugged each other. The sisters were together again. At gunpoint, the prisoners were driven into an empty railroad car. Eighty women were crammed inside and the doors slammed shut. It was dark inside and there was no fresh air. They were squeezed in so tight that they could hardly breathe. For three days and nights, they rattled along the tracks into the heart of Germany. Crusts of dry bread and a few sips of water were all they were allowed to have. Finally, they arrived and entered the gates of the dreaded prison camp called Ravensbrück. Corey and Betsy waited in line to be checked into the prison camp. Each prisoner would be carefully searched. Corey held a little bottle of vitamin oil and also a small Bible. She wanted to keep God's word with her so badly. She knew that they would need God's words of help and encouragement. Betsy was sick and weak, and Corey wanted the vitamin oil to help her. But Corey was worried the guards would find and take those treasures away. 
What could she do? She had to think quickly. They had to strip for the showers and then would be given thin prison dresses to wear. As they waited in line, Corey asked a guard if she and Betsy could use the bathroom. Instead, he sent them to a huge empty shower room. Corey looked around frantically. She saw a pile of old furniture against the wall. Quick, Betsy, Corey whispered. Take off your woolen underwear and give them to me. You are going to need them later to keep warm. Oh, Corey, Betsy gasped. It's filthy. And look at all the bugs in here. Never mind. This is the answer to our prayers, Corey replied. She rolled the little bottle of vitamin oil and the treasured Bible in the underwear, and then Corey hid them in the old furniture. Soon they finished with their showers and retrieved their treasures. But their worries were not over. They had to figure out how to get them past another search by the guards. Well, Corey tied the woolen underwear around her waist under the prison dress, and then she used the Bible and the vitamin oil as shoulder pads. The secret items made huge lumps under her dress. Corey was sure the guards would notice. What do you think? What would happen if Corey got caught? Oh, Lord, please help me, Corey cried. Well, we'll find out next time what happens to Corey. She was willing to risk everything to keep God's word with her. Why? Corey knew that reading the Bible would help her stay strong in her faith, focusing her thoughts on Jesus. Yes, she could choose good thoughts even in Ravensbrück prison camp. Will you choose thoughts that honor God? Ones that are true and pure and lovely? Let's say our theme together again. I can choose good thoughts. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for your amazing love for us, Lord. And it is true, what we think about is so important. Help us, Lord, to learn to focus our minds on what is true and good and right. Help us to turn away from thoughts that are wrong and negative and uh, discouraging, Lord. Help us to trust you like Corey did. And um, just thank you so much for your goodness to us and for these boys and girls. Bless them this week, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next time. Hey kids, welcome to Bubble Gum Night. All right, I have some gum in my mouth. Do you think I'm gonna be able to blow a big bubble or a very teeny bubble? Go ahead and guess, what do you think? Eddie the Eagle, what do you think? <coughs> All right, drum roll please. Let's see if I'm able to blow a big bubble or a very small bubble. Okay, here we go. All right, are you ready to see this? It's gonna be amazing. Oh, it was a very teeny bubble, just like that big. All right, well, do you remember our animal for tonight? That's right, it is the moose. And like the moose, cows and uh, moose do this activity when they chew, okay? It's called chewing the something, where they chew it a lot, and then they swallow it, and then it comes back, and they chew it more, and they swallow it, and it comes back, and they chew it more. Do you remember what it's called? All right, if you said chewing the cud, you are right. And guess what, Eddie? I have been chewing on some thoughts a lot. Now, kids, a lot of you know that about this time last year, I announced to all of you that my wife and I were going to go overseas to live in Austria as missionaries. And then guess what? COVID hit. And we weren't able to go. And we're still not able to go just because the country is still locked down from us being able to get there. And so I've been chewing on a lot of thoughts lately. I know we talked about having a good attitude last week, but Eddie, 
some of my thoughts are like this. Am I ever gonna go over to Austria? Does God even know what he's doing? Um, did I even hear God correctly? What? Some of those thoughts, I don't know. Should I just give up? Is this all useless? Kids, what do you think? When I'm chewing on those thoughts, are those thoughts that are, that are healthy and are positive or are those negative thoughts? What do you think? All right, most of you got that correct. Those were negative thoughts. And you know what? I, I think you're right. You know, from our Bible verse and, and from our bottom line for tonight, I think I really shouldn't be having those negative thoughts. You know, I should surround myself with scripture and worship and God's truth and remind myself of the plan he has for me. Instead, I should be focused on positive thoughts. That I am very excited to get over to Austria. That there's kids over there that I get a minister to. And that not only that, I can learn German. So I'll be, well, bilingual. Those are all great positive thoughts that I can focus on and I can chew on instead of chewing constantly on these negative thoughts. Kids, you know what? I would encourage you to do the same. If you ever have any negative thoughts about, oh, when is school ever going to get done? I just want summer to get here. Oh, it's not fair. My friend gets to go travel on spring break and I have to stay here. Instead of chewing on those negative thoughts, I would encourage you to start chewing on positive thoughts. Look around you. What's positive? What has God blessed you with? Where is God leading you? And how can you be a blessing to other people around you as well? Start chewing on those thoughts instead of the negative thoughts. You know, talking about positive uh, uh, thoughts that we need to focus on, you know, a great way to remind yourself of the truth found in scripture and some of these positive thoughts is to worship God and reorient ourselves on about what's super important, which is him and worshiping him. So go ahead and stand on up. We're going to worship to our first worship song today. Here we go. Stop! 
kids, great job worshiping. Go ahead and have a seat. Now, let's go ahead and say our memory verse for tonight that comes from Philippians 4, 8b. And it says, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's right. Do you remember our theme for tonight? Our theme for tonight is, I could choose good thoughts. Let's say it together. I could choose good thoughts. Now let's all pretend like we're chewing some gum and we say it together. It'll be really nasty if you hate smacking, but we're gonna do it anyways. So pretend you're chewing gum and let's say it together. I can choose good thoughts. That's right, you can choose good thoughts. Well, like our memory verse said that, guess what? We need to think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That reminds me, we still have a second worship song. So stand on your feet and let's praise God. Not only think about it, but actually praise him through our words and actions as well. Here we go. I'm so Patiently I'll wait And I will rest upon his promise Patiently I'll wait kids, great job. Go ahead and have a seat. Well, guess what? If you're joining with us in person, we have an incredible game. We're going to invite volunteers up and do a bubblegum blowing contest. If you're with us online, we're still going to do a bubblegum blowing contest, but this time the bubble contest is between me and Miss Jessica. So here's how it's going to work. I have gum. I'm going to blow a bubble. Miss Jessica, when the video, after I blow my bubble, you go ahead and you blow your bubble. Kids, we're going to see who can blow a bigger, bigger bubble. Do you think it's going to be Zach or do you think it's going to be Jessica? All right, go ahead and cast your vote. I want you to yell out, say, it's going to be Zach or it's going to be Jessica. Think about it. Jessica, are you ready? I'm chewing my gum right now. All right. Eddie the Eagle, do you think I'll win? <laughs> Eddie the Eagle's gonna vote for Miss Jessica. So we'll see who actually can blow, blow the biggest bubble. All right. This gum's kind of really hard to chew, but I think I'm almost there. Let's count down, kids. Five, four, three. Oh! All right, I think Jessica won. That was pretty pathetic on my part. I'm sorry I let you down, but great job, Jessica. Let's give her a round of applause. Woo! Good job, Jessica. Well, kids, make sure you come back next week because guess what? Easter is almost here. So we have rabbit ears night. I want you to wear a pair of rabbit ears. Or if you don't have a pair of rabbit ears, wear a pair of cat ears or goofy ears or funny ears or a headband 
Or let's see what else you could do. A, an Easter hat and you can decorate it up as well. Okay, so wear any of that and come prepared because we have a fun night next week. We are going to be doing an egg smash contest on Eddie the Eagle, my head. Can you believe it? We're also going to do a jelly bean guessing contest as well. So make sure you come back and start working on memory verse lesson 24 as well. All right, Eddie Eagle, I think I need to get my uh, gum skills up, up to speed. So kids, I'll catch you later. Eddie the Eagle, let's chew some more gum.